let's take a look at the markets. My name is Wayne McDonald. I'm the Chief FX Market Strategist for TradersWay.com. Thank you very much for being a client. I totally appreciate you. Let's do some technical analysis. We'll cover the dollar pairs, the yen pairs, golden oil. I believe we got a testimony going on by Powell, so uh, the market's moving. Things are interesting. This is a, a quick opportunity just for us to get together as a community, align our satellites, say hi, check support and resistance, and moveon.com. I'll try to answer your questions, but I think this is going to be a quickie just because uh, the markets are, are moving. So without further ado, thank you very much to uh, Traders Way for making this webinar possible. Make sure you uh, pay it back by opening an account. Make sure you do things like subscribe and like and comment. These are all important for us to reach other uh, foreign exchange traders. Let's save a few Forex souls. Portugal, huh? Love Portugal. Greece, love Greece. Fortunately, I've never been to either country, but. All right, so without further ado, Let's go. Maybe we get a breakout, maybe not. Just remind yourself it is summer. Sometimes you get a move like that, and it's frustrating because it doesn't move to happen. Okay. Now, we have like a, a scalp trade down here, if you recall. Uh, I think that was my NFP trade, wasn't it? I scalped it down. Look at that. Nice. Anyways, we're kind of tickling a monthly support pivot. It's not really one that we care about that much. It's not a major support pivot, so I just consider it sort of hanging out there. If we get caught up in the res resistance above us, oops, if we get caught in the resistance above us, the 55 tells us there's a high likelihood of a double bottom. Now, of course, it could just go up and up and up and up and up, but generally speaking, in normal market conditions, it does not. Jolt, I believe it's uh, the Powell testimony. Okay, so anyways, look at the moving averages. Technically, it's bearish. Technically, it's moderately bearish, and you should not expect like this. Now, the one thing that would make it go higher would be a fundamental information like the central bank um, speech. Sure, that could do it, or in, in this case, testimony. Okay. So that's 40% of the Forex market right there. Weak dollar produces strong gold. Strong gold is a much better setup, as you can see. We talked about this yesterday. Lots and lots of monthly support. Right? Remember I said if you set things up, it doesn't matter if you're a bull or a bear. <clears throat> if you're a bear, you got to set up here. you got to set up here. you got to set up here. And then, right? And I think I had it this way. I'm like, yeah, if you're a bear, we don't know if it's going to make a lower low, but if you do, you'll look like a genius. If it doesn't make a lower low, then you don't look like a genius. So in this case, now bulls, right, they had their opportunity here and here. Um, there's one here. There's one here. So now what? Well, notice that this is an M2. So I don't know if we're going to get some sort of retracement back up and start working our way up into some bullishness. But bear in mind, we got lots of resistance in here, and we have additional resistance up in here. G'day, Michelle. How are you, love? Ripper. All right. <clears throat> Daniel. Hey, did you get that message I sent you? It's pretty champ pretty champagne color. <whistles> Beijing, what's up, eight? Keep thinking I gotta go there. I gotta go back to Beijing. Okay. Beast. Remember, pound's not that strong. Cool. 
well, I know it's summer and all that kind of stuff. You probably have family stuff going on like everybody else. But, uh... Haha. <laughs> Eight. I appreciate that, but if I go back to Beijing, one of the major reasons for going back to Beijing is for the duck. I know, very touristy, I know. But, uh, Peking duck. Oh, yeah, 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 go see the Forbidden City in the Great Wall, yeah, yeah. But the Peking duck. So anyways, I'll probably want to stay away from Beast. Swissy, you can see. That's a risk-off play. Sort of. Depends. That's why you don't trade these two together. The reason for that is a weak USD is risk-on. Strong US, uh, Swiss franc is risk-off. So you got to figure out which one's going on. So this is inconclusive. And only because the dollar might be so unbelievably weak that it makes Swissy look strong, but Swissy might not actually be strong. Yeah, eight. You know, an eight. It, I wouldn't want to go to like a, a fancy, you know, brand new restaurant with fl fl fluorescent lights everywhere. <laughs> you know, bright lights. Um, I want to go to, uh, old town, old school. Bring it right out of the oven. You know, takes two days to make. So let's see if we can get some more information. You know, here's. Uh, I did, well, I guess I should do uh, oil. Okay. This is very similar to something else that we talked about yesterday. Maybe it was uh, gold. We, we talked about, like, there's clear setups if you're a bear. There's clear setups if you're a bull. And it's people that m don't have any bias that make up their... They, uh, they sit down every day and they trade whatever they see in the moment. Those are the guys that get slaughtered. Okay. Yeah, and I don't know about street food, but yeah, yeah. Hawkers, maybe. Okay. So anyways, um, too late to buy, right? You, had, you could have bought it down here. You could have bought it down here. Um, yesterday, we were in a zone that it could be bullish or it could be bearish. It didn't. It was 50-50. So trading up here is not really a good idea. Okay, maybe you traded a breakout pullback or something, but to me, you should be buying where, where buyers buy. You should be selling where sellers sell. Everything in between is just mediocrity and unprofessionalism. Okay, now if you were sell, uh, trading, you would be selling here, and you'd be selling here. Okay, but you certainly wouldn't be buying. Okay. You might say, well, Wayne, look, it went up. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's not the issue. The issue is you're buying in the middle of a range. That's the issue. Yeah, Ed, that's true. I like hawker food. Um, like uh, Singapore, right? Singapore has got fantastic street food. That chili crab, never forget that meal, hey Daniel. All right, let's, let's take a look at Yen's. Yeah, I know, Ed, it just never happened. I tried, man. Okay, remember how we're talking about congruency? Has much changed? Euro's a little more bullish. Kiwi's a little more stabilized. CAD hasn't really done anything. And Aussie hasn't really done anything. But the Japanese yen is still generally weak. Okay, Aussie hasn't regained anything, but look, Kiwi has. So, you know, it's in interesting and it's hopeful. And it's hopeful because they're doing it at the right price. So, as you know, buyers are buying here. Okay, 
they've been having trouble with this recent move is uh, quite hopeful for bulls, right? So if every, but if these guys are bullish, everyone should be relatively bullish. Uh, this is just sort of a price action move. It doesn't really tell me anything. And notice that we're kicking off the 200 EMA. We talked about this maybe, what, four days ago. That's the fair market value. So again, that doesn't tell me anything. So this tells me a little bit. This tells me nothing. This is sort of just hanging out. I imagine there's a 200 EMA about there as well. So sort of maybe, but like I said, nothing really going on here. And then this one's trying, but it, it ain't succeeding. It, we're still way down here. I'd rather be here or here by now. So still, right? Still not that amazing. And this also isolates the moves to the U.S. dollar specifically, not risk on, risk off. You need to be able to do that and say, why is the market behaving the way it's behaving? Is it is it all risk on? Is it all risk off? Is it just U.S. dollar? Is it just Swiss franc? Is it just the Japanese yen? And then you can go around. Okay, which one of these is the strongest? I probably guess uh, this. You know, over the last five days, maybe euro. Uh, over the last five hours, maybe New Zealand. So uh, we can try like Kiwi Dollar. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, right there. Okay, look at that. I'm smoking hot like fire. When I turn, you desire. I'll freshen you, because you white. All right. So, potential change in direction. You can't buy here, of course. But what if you were looking for something like this? Could be interesting, huh? Totally weird setup. Let me just refresh just to make sure that that's a legit chart. No, it's not a legit chart. Aha! Ha 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 ha! Ah, check your data. Check your data, son. All right, let's try this again. This makes much more sense. Down, 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 down. I'll play this area here. Okay, so if I was able to buy a dip over the next 24 hours, I would hang on to it probably all next week. Okay. Make it the sense? Where is your trouble going to live? Mm, up here. Okay. Notice that on this time frame, we're on the 200 EMA fair market value. You should not buy or sell there. If you're going to sell, just reverse engineer what I just said. If you were going to sell, you would sell up here. If you're going to buy, you should buy down here. 